a new, exciting open source blockchain platform has been born. Its core mission is to develop easier and more affordable tools for everyone to be able to create tokens and NFTs. For the first time, we're introducing the innovative Tokel platform, a fully decentralized community-driven project with contributors globally. It offers many new powerful features for artists, content creators, and event organizers, and token owners. Tokel is building the future of tokenization together with the help of Komodo Technologies. Creators and users have the freedom to create, to hold, buy, sell, and trade tokens with ease. Developers have the freedom to build on top of the platform's layer. Tokel has features such as simplified token creation tools, token decks, and NFT marketplace. The NFT creation process has an extremely low barrier to entry. Businesses and individuals can now benefit from the token economy by using tokens in everyday life. A built-in decentralized exchange enables peer-to-peer -peer trading. Tokel.io, the future of tokenization to NFT and beyond. Greetings, I'm Giuliano. Welcome to Tokel Talk. Today's episode, we'll be talking about B2B blockchains for supply sustainability, NFTs built for security, and much more. Joining us today are Heichel from Cryo and several team members from Driven Ecosystem and Cyber Knights. Hello, Heichel. Hello, Giuliano. Hello, Paul from Driven. Hello, everybody. Hello, Nico. Hey, everyone. Hello, Brandon. Hello, everybody. And hello, Scott. Hey there, everyone. All right. We also have Kelsey here. Hi, Kelsey. Hey. Good afternoon, everybody. And we have Nutella Lika. Hello. Hey, welcome, everybody. Of course, thanks to Dream Tim and Cax. We'll also be doing an NFT giveaway, so stay tuned for that. Watch out for the form that will get posted in the Tokal Events chat during the stream. If you would like to be a guest on the show in future, visit our website, tokal.io slash tokaltalk. All right. Now, before we meet our guests, here's Kelsey with some NFT stats. Hey, so for last week, there were over 125,000 NFTs sold with sales volume of over $427 million. The global market cap for the NFT industry is sitting at over $10.5 billion right now. The top five collections with the highest volume were all on Ethereum, number one being Other Deed for Other Side, number two, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Number three was Bored Ape Yacht Club. Number four was Moonbirds. And number five was Doodles. The top five top selling NFTs that sold for the most last week were the Mega City Land Sale NFT, which sold for $1.47 million. A Moonbird sold for $845,000. A CryptoMundo platform access NFT sold for $761,000. A Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT sold for $726,000. And a rare Other Deed for Other Side Land NFT sold for $711,000. So in NFT news, over the last week, we saw one of the largest NFT mints in history which was the other side for other deeds, a project by the creators of the Board Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs. This launched on Saturday night. Each NFT sold represents a virtual land plot in the upcoming Board Ape Yacht Club metaverse game. 55,000 parcels of digital land were auctioned off at around 7,000 each per parcel. And 45,000 parcels are also being given to holders of Board Ape Yacht Club and Mutant Ape Yacht Club NFTs. The sale raised around $320 million for the Board Ape Yacht Club creators, but also created the highest gas fees in Ethereum's history with over $180 million in gas fees from this event alone. Excited collectors and investors congested the Ethereum blockchain and Ethereum gas fees scale in relation to congestion of the network. This congestion raised the gas fees and slowed transaction speeds for traders and minters, affected all Ethereum-based applications across the blockchain. This led to astronomical fees in the thousands of dollars for small, simple transactions. 
and there has been a public request for some gas fees to be refunded to buyers. One other Deeds NFT buyer claimed on Twitter that they minted four other Deed NFTs and paid over $14,000 in gas fees. Collectors and investors questioned the blockchain's ability to host large-scale NFT projects, and Yuga Labs even suggested creating their own ApeCoin blockchain to avoid this from happening again in the future. In other news... OpenSea set a trading record of 476 million traded in Ethereum in the last 24 hours, and this is largely because of the Other Deed Mint. Parcels won at the Other Deed auction on Saturday went for around $7,000 each and were immediately listed on OpenSea at around $19,000 each. The other deed project has generated over $559 million in secondary market sales since Saturday evening. Also this week, the Solana network had to be restarted on Saturday after a seven-hour outage. The blockchain was flooded with NFT minting bots using Candy Machine to auto-mint NFTs. Candy Machine is a Solana-based application for launching NFT collections. The Solana network was restarted after its main net lost consensus after receiving over 4 million transactions per second from bots trying to automate. Solana has experienced a similar outage in September of 2021 and many smaller ones after, and the outage caused the price of Sol to drop by nearly 7%. In other NFT news, the Vatican is teaming up with Sensorium, a VR project, and creating an NFT gallery to democratize art. This will help to preserve and to also share the Vatican's priceless collection of manuscripts, art, and other objects of significant historical value. Right now, the Vatican holds over 800 pieces of art and manuscript that have never been seen by the public. Hyundai Motors announced that it will be issuing 10,000 NFTs as part of its sold-out community-based MetaMobility NFT project, which was launched in April in collaboration with MetaKongs. In January, Hyundai revealed this MetaMobility concept of using VR devices to remotely control physical robots. President and head of the Transportation as a Service Division at Hyundai, Chang Song, said that the idea behind metamobility is that space, time, and distance will all become irrelevant. By connecting robots to the metaverse, we will be able to move freely between both the real world and virtual reality. Hyundai is also collaborating with a popular play-to-earn blockchain gaming brand called Metatoy Dragons as an attempt to appeal to a younger audience, specifically Millennials and Generation Z. Also in blockchain gaming, a Hong Kong-based digital fitness company, All of X, is creating a burn-while-you-burn game. Players of the game Dustland Runner will be rewarded in crypto and NFTs for running various distances in the real world. And in sustainable NFT news, last week we saw the launch of a sustainable NFT project, The Futures. The Futures is a collection of 5,000 NFT avatars. By minting one of the five NFTs, holders are granted access to future NFT drops, physical and digital assets, live events, and also access to the Futures' own brand of sustainably sourced streetwear. For every NFT bought, they will plant two trees. And that is the NFT news. All right. That was a, a lot. Thank you, Kelsey. There was some yeah, very interesting yes, things there. Yeah, I hope we can get a chance to talk about a few of those subjects. Let's move on to the Cyber Nights and discuss with some of the team members here a little bit about what's going on there. So let's start with Paul. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having yeah. me. So just introduce yourself and basically you told me you were pretty young as well and that you got started some years ago just entrepreneurially for yourself. So why don't you just give us a bit of that background? Yeah, so uh, I'm Paul Schokarde. I'm the founder of Drive On Ecosystem. I'm 23 years old. I will be 24 this month. And yeah, I started my, my journey long time ago when I was 15 or something. I started with a marketing agency and I ran it until last year when I discovered DeFi and I started to 
to build driven ecosystem. I started to build it from ambition because as I started to invest in crypto, I saw that over 80% of the tokens were rug pulls or honeypots. And I, I just said in my mind, why people don't have a long-term thinking and create something big. So yeah, this is how, how it started in, in the first day. Nico joined the team after that Cody and Scott and later, later in the past year, uh, Brandon joined us too. Nice. This is great. So that's a good start. Maybe, um, Nico, you want to jump in and just share with us, how, how did you get involved then? You, you joined with Paul uh, pretty early on. Yeah. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nico and I'm CEO and co-founder of Drug Driven Ecosystem. I'm the team's youngest team member and I'm coming from Croatia. I started this DeFi project with Paul and our one uh, year anniversary is actually coming up in a few days. So it has been a long and exciting journey so far. I basically started investing in crypto and found Paul uh, randomly. I helped him with the website and with the social platforms. And that's basically how I joined him. And yeah, it's been a really great journey and I'm looking toward to the future. What did you see? You saw Paul um, and what was Paul building? I really love his idea about the B2B space and crypto. This is basically what I saw and this was interesting to me. And he was really honest from the start with just a few of the investors because we needed to do a migration from the start. And honesty is the most important thing in the crypto space. So this is basically how I fell in love with the project and the team itself. Amazing. Well, good. Thanks for joining us today to share part of that with us and uh, really wishing you well on this uh, coming up to your one year anniversary. And we hope that you'll have many more. So Scott, how, how did you join the picture? Nico, should I tell the whole story? Yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah, you should tell it. <laughs> okay, so basically I was involved in a couple other really large named projects just as a very dedicated community member um, who was kind of not day one, but close to day one on a couple of them that you'll know uh, the names of that I'm not going to mention. Um, but I got kind of a little bummed out on those projects when I unturned some things myself. And then I was looking around for other projects and I found uh, when they launched the first uh, driven protocol token, I found that contract and then ended up by accident, forget what I was using, you know, maybe just even BSC scan, something stumbled upon it. And then from there, um, you know, I found the socials, found the discord and I went into the discord and I was really upset because I had uncovered some things from the other projects I was involved with. And so I went in really skeptical and I was not also in a good mood that day. And so I went in there being a real jerk and just like kind of, you know, saying it was a rug pull right off the bat. And every time Nika would say something or, you know, there was like a couple other people there say something, I'd be like, no, this, this, and this. And I was just throwing all these different things out there. And more than anything, it was just angry um, at the world. But Nico, every single time that I said something, you know, bad or in a, in a jerky way, he would come back, you know, with such poise and, and, you know, being really professional and actually have an answer. And then so after going back and forth for about an hour like this or so, uh, finally, I started to kind of soften up a bit. And I was like, OK, well, let me look more into this. And then finally, we talked a bit and I was like, OK, well, I'm going to get in touch with Paul. I reached out to Paul on his LinkedIn. And I was like, okay, well, if this thing's legit, I want in on it. Because same thing as Paul, I was like just so upset with the way things were going in the, the DeFi space in particular, but just in crypto as a whole. And I'm still upset about it. You know, I'm upset about the way that these, these other projects kind of make all of us look bad by doing scammy things. Paul and I shared that we, we had, you know, a conversation for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then I was like, okay, great. I want to do anything and everything I can to help this project and, you know, help you at this point. And that was, you know, only a couple days, I think, into the, the driven journey anyway. I think when I found the contract that was less than 24 hours old, it was the second contract, as Nico said, they had to migrate, which when I found out how they migrated and how they did it was just amazing to me. And they really took care of the people as there was a problem in the contract and they had to kind of deal with that and move on. And when that happened, it was the chance for anybody to be able to run away with the bag. And Paul and Nico didn't do that. They stayed. And then they also gave their own money, their own tokens to people and made sure that the people from that first, you know, launch 
had more than a fair uh, relaunch, and it was way more than fair. And then, so in the end, yeah, that was it. It was just, I found Paul, and I found Nico, and I found people that actually really cared about the crypto space. And I, I have a background in tech and been doing that. I'm the oldest one on the team. So I'm, I'm 43 and uh, live in California, work in Silicon Valley, been working in tech since I was uh, 15. I used to cut high school to go work in tech. And so, yeah, you know, that's kind of the, the way it's, uh, it's been for me. You know, it's um, just been a lot of kind of bouncing from one tech thing to the next. And then I found this and I found people that shared my, my love of honesty and kind of pushing the envelope when it comes to technology. Very nice. Very nice. Shared values between you. That's a, a great story. And I'm very curious to hear more about everything that's going on, particularly you, you start to move in towards the cyber nights. But uh, before we move to that, maybe we'll get a, a final introduction here from, from Brandon. Hey, everyone. So I am the uh, lead UX UI designer for Driven Ecosystem. I joined, I believe, in around six months ago, um, a very similar kind of sentiment to a lot of the folks on the team. Uh, I was introduced to DeFi space, um, and I kind of just, I invested in a couple things. I was lucky enough to avoid rug pulls, but I started reading about them and, and different ways people would get scammed. And it really kind of infuriated me one night. <laughs> so I was up late, I couldn't sleep. And I'm thinking of like, if I were to do a crypto project, this is what I would do. Um, and I just stumbled across Driven Ecosystem and started looking into it and reached out to Nico and kind of offered to see, you know, what what do you guys need uh, for help? Because that was formulated in such a way that was very similar to, to those ideas I had. My background, uh, I have uh, medical device design. Uh, I work currently in enterprise SaaS uh, design as well. But I like using my skills to help people. And that's kind of my huge ma main motivation. And so you know, a lot of the tools that we build at Driven Ecosystem are focused on either helping people obtain and keep control of, of their assets or helping them to be safe. We do a lot of information. You know, we even, even when new people join our uh, community, if they're new to, to DeFi, we kind of give them some pointers about make sure you do this, make sure you pay attention to this. And, and it's not about investing in our project or, or any of that stuff. It's just about ensuring that people are safe and someone's looking out for them as best that we can. So that's what we try to do. Well, thank you. And uh, that's obviously appreciated. And I, full disclosure, I share similar sentiments that you shared there, Scott, as well, about the feelings towards people basically scamming others and making everybody else look bad. All the, the good potential, uh, you know, gets lumped in with, with the, the bad behavior. And so I, I appreciate the, the four of you. It sounds like a great, a great connection that you've made. I would like to know from here, Okay, Scott, where does uh, Cyber Nights fit into this? Uh, Brandon just mentioned about keeping people safe and security. So tell us a bit about Cyber Nights. Yeah, so so with Cyber Nights, we, we knew we wanted to do um, an NFT collection, and we really wanted to kind of invent a utility that was beyond what NFTs are today. So uh, a lot of NFTs, they could be for art, um, they could be for access to like a Discord, uh, is kind of the way I like to put it. And so we kind of looked at it and said, well, what, what can we do about security? Like, what, what can we utilize these for? Uh, so we came up with this idea of use, utilizing NFTs to protect crypto. You know, we, we looked at a lot of different kind of ways that maybe a, a cold wallet will function or all these other things. And then we tried to see how we could fit NFTs into this. And so we're in the process right now of developing two dApps. Uh, they will be browser-based dApps. And they will kind of work together. You'll store your crypto in there. You'll have uh, the CyberNice NFT. And that NFT will kind of act as uh, a form of a multi-factor authentication within these apps. Uh, so they'll kind of all communicate with each other. And so that if a hacker were to gain access to where you're storing, let's say, um, it would be incredibly difficult for them to actually remove those funds because um, it's it's I don't want to get into the details of it, but essentially... Um, you would be notified that that uh, an attempted transaction was there. You would be able to stop the transaction, lock everything down, um, and then you know uh, we can we can work with with people to kind of help them to remediate the situation as well. So that's what we're building, and, and it's all powered by our NFTs. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that and and getting that out out to the world. You will push a request to transfer some funds to a given wallet, and the request will go to the NFT smart contract from where you will be able to approve or decline the transfer 
As well, we will have a timeout of five minutes. So if nothing will happen in five minutes, the transfer will be canceled. Yeah. So in that way, because one of the things is like you want to you want to notify people. So if if someone gains access to one of my credentials, I want to know that because it, it doesn't help me if they gain access to it. And I don't know that it's been Oh, compromise. compromise. I, um, so I wouldn't know that that was. So that was another big thing. We need to be able to to tell people that this has been compromised. So that is a big part. So as as Paul said, with the timeout, that was one of our solutions. Essentially, uh, if someone goes in and they get they get access to one of your credentials, they go to try to push this transaction and pull things out. They won't actually be able to do that. Um, so that will eventually time out, and then you'll the next time you go into the app, you'll see that there's this attempted transaction that wasn't you. Uh, you'll be able to check, find out which credential had been compromised, and then go in and, and change those credentials to ensure that nobody can access that again. So you'll be able to lock that down. And you've chosen the Knights, Cyber Knights, as a, a symbol of, of protecting people's funds. Yeah, that's correct. They, they protect the, I think we say they protect the DeFi realm, I think is the, the yeah. kind of the way we went around that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for, for joining us and telling us about Cyber Knights. Of course, there's a lot more time in the show and we can talk more about it. But I also want to move over and speak with Heichel, who is joining us from Kraya. And I would just first like to say hello, Heichel, once again. Thanks for waiting patiently. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. And so how about yourself? How, how did you get involved with, with Kraya? And if you could give us a few words about what, what Kraya is doing. Yeah, so I got involved in the space uh, over five, a little bit over five years ago. And it was at a time when I was studying at the University of Amsterdam. And then uh, I had to attend some extracurricular activities. Um, so I just attended a conference and they were talking about the promises of, uh, of crypto and Web3. And I uh, got really intrigued and just started researching it next to my studies. And then got involved in the space by uh, joining a student-run organization called Blockchain Education Network. And then we were just essentially like a, a club of geeks just geeking out about crypto and meeting other students, giving lectures at the university. And then throughout that time, started consulting because the government was running a few like experimental projects. So starting out from, I guess, an opportunist, mindset that there's a, I guess, once in a lifetime opportunity of joining uh, like a technical revolution and then have much idea about what we're going to do in it. And then that eventually started um, maturing. So we started consulting with different uh, companies, organizations in, in multiple industries. We've uh, tackled like mobility use cases and traceability use cases. So very much focused in the B2B industry. And I would say, yeah, as Cryo, what we, we offer is product development, which are now becoming in a more matured state. So becoming ventures in B2B products. And also, yeah, creating consortiums around these organizations because it's it's all about collaboration so we try to bring the the right parties to the table of a, of a given industry and try to align incentives and, and solve industry-wide problems together so that's the b2b side and now we also started working more with uh, more web3 i guess layer one protocols also building different products and and starting ventures with them okay very interesting so with the, the team that you work with over there, you're involved with helping businesses communicate with each other using blockchain technologies. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's essentially like you have these problems that, for example, in, in the case of a supply chain, you have these problems that they all share in common. Like how do you, for example, trace the carbon footprint of Pacific product? And that incorporates many manufacturers, suppliers, and, and fabrication, all of these parties that are connected to one another that have to contribute input as well um, in order to collectively find a solution to a problem that is relevant to all of them, but requires all of them to collaborate as well to, to solve. After that, it involves designing and, and building the product, which would be, like you mentioned, tracking the so one product, for example, that we're working in is tracking uh, the cobalt supply chain, where we are connecting all of the parties from, from the mines all the way to the OEMs in order to trace a product. So 
therefore again using NFTs to create assets to be traced in the supply chain. And additionally, once you have uh, a tracking layer of these products, you can add additional layers to it. For example, the carbon footprint that all of these parties contribute to that product or the product composition in its totality. So that's how we focus on connecting the parties and building multiple layers of tools that try to tackle supply chain-wide problems. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's how you reinvent supply chain collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Because I think one thing to note that is interesting as well is that these parties, like the mentality that they had before about being very competitive, like it's very rare to even have them sit together and think about collaboration to these problems in the first place. And I think uh, the technology um, lowered that entry or barrier of entry by making it more approachable to become like a public utility that they're all going to use, I guess, leverage and, and, and work together. Yeah. Nice. And so then on, 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 in, in the real world, you've got them also collaborating through the consortia. You get them together and they collaborate and they discuss. And so you're, you're also involved with, like you said, bringing the people to the table. Yeah. I think it's important to, to include everyone and, and have everyone's input. Otherwise, it, it just creates an imbalance in, in needs of the platform. And that helps so to, to drive, sorry, that, yeah, that helps to drive the adoption through these businesses? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. And so you've mentioned a couple of times some, some ideas about like sustainability through using NFTs to track. I'm sure there's a lot of details involved with that. So... How, how does that all come together? And, and, and like, what does that mean for you when you think about uh, these sustainability efforts that are being tried? Uh, yeah, so I think from, from a fundamental level, like sustainability problem is something that like we, if we look at from a broad spectrum, like we all contributed to, uh, we all created this problem together. But when you look at the solutions being derived, it's often very challenging to get parties to work together towards a solution. Like everyone thinks, for example, that the investment may be too high and that will affect my, I guess, my prominent position in the market because I have to invest in sort of investing in growth and investing in sustainability problems. But by unifying these parties under the same goal or the same umbrella, uh, it, it levels out the playing field and makes it easier to collaborate because it's not a tool that is owned by a specific party that is trying to push a solution, but it's carried by everyone in the industry. Okay, yeah, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, I hope that we're catching you clearly enough because you're saying some, some pretty good stuff and I want to make sure that we're all catching you here. You talked about like finding a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of a, like this technological revolution, in a sense, and you're using that to now to to do like if somebody comes along and says you're doing nfts for sustainability and so that that's pretty fascinating and i'm always interested to see the all the different applications that are being thought of and used not just for example all the retail popular things but today we get a chance to listen to some some interesting b2b endeavors so i'm just curious like uh, do you do you use specific blockchains for these companies, do you do you advise on blockchains, or or does it not go that far? Like we take an agnostic approach. We see that different blockchains have different uh, trade offs, and and yeah, can be used differently in different use cases. So we take an agnostic approach. We've done a lot of work on Ethereum solutions. I guess like most people in the space as well, because it's just a rich ecosystem that has a lot of tooling. So you can really quickly uh, build solutions and, and test out. Other protocols, I guess, we touch is uh, in the Cosmos realm. We're working together with uh, Agoric right now, uh, working with Definity. So yeah, we we don't have a commitment to a single blockchain, but try to build tools that yeah are I guess say relevant to all of them, because we take a very user centric approach as well to it, and then try to even hide I guess the blockchain from the user experience as much as possible. I'd be interested to know how you interact with the different blockchains teams, I guess, like from my point of view, coming from Tockle, you know, this is something I'm very interested in understanding and help build out is the, are these tools. Do you reach out to the individual blockchain teams or just use, um, utilize the tools on top? 
So we, we do have uh, certain close collaborations with the blockchain teams because we like we also try to help foster the growth of, let's say, in a web, more web three focus, help foster the growth of ecosystems that I guess we, we believe in. So we provide educational content as well for the community and uh, build tutorials, build sample dApps to, to showcase, I guess, what what we consider to be best practices um, when it comes to development. Uh, so in, in that regard, we work closely to the teams and then they also help us with technical validation of our, let's say, our architecture of the solution. Yeah, okay. So you've worked alongside some of the teams to uh, either change your tooling or or have you changed like the fundamental blockchain or I guess you've created smart contracts along the way to do that. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So more and more in the smart contracting layer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Have you worked with any non-smart contract uh, based blockchains? No, we've actually only worked with smart contract based ones. Oh, interesting. Cool. I find it uh, I find it really interesting to see where it can go. And I guess from your standpoint, the consulting aspect is uh, open ended in terms of what businesses would like to utilize the blockchain technology. So, what uh, without you know, I guess going into specific details, what types of businesses have you onboarded and uh, helped tool out to utilize blockchain? I guess the biggest most mature projects we're running right now is that Congo one, where we have a consortium of, I'd say, most of the mines in that area that, that have managed the supply of cobalt. And then through, through their network, we find their suppliers and then so on, connect everyone together. So it's, it, and I guess from my technical perspective, what we first started is creating, I guess, the traceability layer. And, and one challenge specifically in, for us is trying to bridge that physical world, uh, digital world link, because it's, I guess, blockchain solutions are uh, a bit more trivial to solve if everything exists and all of the assets are only operated and, and verified in the digital world. But once you start connecting it with the physical world, uh, you have to implement different trust mechanisms to, to try to keep that synchronization between the two the physical and the digital world together as close as possible. So you can start thinking about, for example, IoT integration for data input and verification of, of receivable. But I guess the most down to the core, what it brings is like a ledger of commitments of physical activities that occur between the parties. So even if you have like garbage in, garbage out problem, is that party that is responsible for committing that false information that is always to be traced back in, in the ledger. But that coupling of the two worlds is really, really a challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. Do you utilize NFTs in this, in this process of, I guess, uh, collecting data as well? Uh, yeah, so I guess most of our focus around NFTs is trying to extend on the NFT features. Because you have that base layer. I guess what we're mostly you know, um, know in the space right now is NFT as a, a digital certificate that represents a digital asset that can be an image or or a GIF. But essentially what an NFT is, is a representation of ownership of any type of, of data structure. If you look at it from that perspective, it allows you to have, for example, NFTs that operate in a dynamic way. So for example, in the gaming industry, a, a character that you own as an NFT could have different stats that are dynamically altered in a specific context, for example. And in that, in that sense, it, it really broadens the scope of what an, an NFT actually is than to just be like a certificate of ownership of digital assets. It's more like a certificate of ownership of a data structure that can be altered with states and different representations in the different worlds that that NFT exists, for example. So really trying to expand on the utilities uh, that you can get from, from the NFT standard as we know. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Appreciate you answering my questions. Yeah, for sure. Definitely very informative so far in this, in this discussion. And, and we're going to open it back up to everybody now. So thanks, Aisho, for going in depth about, uh, about Cryo. And I'm just curious, you know, actually, I want to bring it back because of some of the things you were just saying, Aisho. We could talk, Kelsey, you, you'll correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, but I believe you said it was Hyundai who are trying to collapse, was it uh, space, time, and objects? You're talking about the, uh, the meta-mobility 
project. Meta mobility. Yeah. So did, did yeah, did everybody hear that? Paul, Scott, Brandon, Nico, Heichel? Yeah, I, I was trying to comprehend it. I, I would imagine that it has to do with uh, moving some data or information or communications into the metaverse, which would not, that would be non-dependent on physical, in the physical yeah. world. Is that correct? It's more so connecting robots to the metaverse that yeah. will be able to move freely between the real world and virtual reality. So this could actually affect how labor is performed later on. Imagine you're going to, like, do you guys think that you, you might end up projecting your own perception through that uh, robot, uh, like through the video uh, camera and everything else and, and like interacting as a robot avatar? The funky thing with, that I find with blockchain, uh, especially uh, with, with any new technology, is, is trying to determine how the market's going to utilize something. I would actually expect uh, sort of what Kelsey, I would assume, hinted at, but I, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I could see this more in a manufacturing sense. So basically, from anywhere in the world, you could have like a home base for some large organization, let's say Toyota, and then you could you could kind of operate all of those uh, robots interconnected uh, from that one location, uh, as opposed to having it be location specific. That's what I would imagine the use case would be for that. And it's just because of, uh, there's a lot of money there. And so I always try to think of that as like, what industries would want this? How would people utilize this? That's what I would imagine. Also, since it's Hyundai that is launching this meta mobility project, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them sort of, uh, you know, redoing how how labor is made for their products. It's it's going to be really interesting to see this uh, kind of pan out the next couple of years. I would imagine that you're right. It it does seem that it's probably a manufacturing thing. I, I would because why would Hyundai uh, decide to do that? You know, we'd we'd have to look into that. We know that they use robotics to to build these uh, vehicles. Uh, so that would be my guess is what they're trying to do. Be very interesting. It's also just a, a, the next step in really the evolution of technology and humanity kind of intertwining. Yeah, and I, I wonder though from that point, you know, and I as a, a lifelong, you know, technologist like in, and been in the industry since, you know, 95. So I saw the dot-com, you know, boom and everything. And I saw a lot of people trying to shoehorn technologies, you know, even back then. Um, into places that it didn't necessarily make sense. And so I, I always question when I hear something like this is, well, why, why blockchain? What's the benefit to, you know, uh, using blockchain in this versus like traditional Web2 technologies, which can obviously do all of this already? And so I wonder, you know, what is, what's different about this iteration of it that it makes them want to leverage blockchain? Um, or is it just to be kind of part of the, the hype and part of the game now? and kind of have that feather in their cap as well. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen there. They're partnering with someone to do, to make play to earn games, perhaps in later on, we'll, we'll see a sort of uh, work to earn type of game, which is just kind of work, I guess. I wonder if they're trying to compete with Tesla, All right? Tesla has that weird arcade thing in their cars. Maybe they're trying to do something novelty like that for all. I know. Yeah. It's it's peculiar and it is a difficult thing, you know. It's something we we discuss uh, in deep in in uh, we have deep discussions about because because like the like the idea with our NFTs, we're always looking to try and say, okay, well, what can blockchain do that that nobody's doing or that that people? Are, how can we take something someone's doing and leverage it to to create something that's a little bit more useful? I think um, I personally, and and this is not me speaking for our team, but this is my personal feeling, is that uh, the the real way to move blockchain forward, similar to what we saw with the dot com boom, I'm I'm around Cody's age, so so we we both experienced it relatively similarly, but I think it's getting this technology into the hands of everyday people, and right now, cryptocurrency seems to be a very niche thing, um, and it isn't until people are going to start leveraging blockchain to improve the current infrastructure, like uh, Scott had mentioned, of Web2, um, and so on and so forth. When that starts happening and it starts impacting regular people's regular lives, then people will take notice and care about it. But it's a little bit difficult right now because it's niche and, you know, we hear about the meme coins. That's basically all we hear about. So it'll be really interesting. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, I'm not 
too familiar with the uh, hundred project. But I think let's say how how blockchain could be applied or, or projects that we've explored in the past in, in the context of mobility is how to streamline collaboration among the parties that are providing mobility services. So to put that in the, the context of like a parcel delivery company or industry, you have different companies that are planning out their own routes and, and really just driving past each other and, and delivering their own parcels that they're responsible for. But if you have like a common ground of tracking, like who's, who's in custody of what parcel, you can create like a more dynamic system where these, these trucks, for example, have points where they meet each other, exchange packages, instead of like rerouting the route by themselves, just splitting, I guess, the cost, driving the cost down for everyone who's using the service. Um, and in that sense, be able to operate far more efficiently. But I think it does require like a common ground, just as the, just like roads are public utilities for these companies to operate now, to have a digital infrastructure as well that allows for these exchanges of value that occur in the physical or in the real world. So that's what I wanted to comment on it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think the Brilliant. collaboration is the big piece there where these these bigger companies might be doing it just to put a you know feather in their cap to say, hey, yeah, we're in the, the blockchain or cryptocurrency or NFT space, whatever they want to market. But also it's part of research and development yeah. for them as well to try and understand how they can utilize this technology, how they can utilize it to collaborate, how they can bring value to their customers. Because a lot of the big companies might might not actually know so it's easy to pitch it as like a marketing piece like hey if we get involved we can you know enter it from a marketing space because it's pretty popular right now but ultimately they're going to learn something from it and then build out the space whether it's um, you know tooling technology wise or build different collaborations or bring value to their customers in a different way i think there's um, a lot of exploration going on with bigger companies and they're kind of just following each other uh, one by one at the moment, which I think is a really positive thing because it's bringing a lot of uh, education to the the ecosystem as a whole, and a lot more people are learning about it. And the more that you know, the more people that learn about it, the more people that are going to get involved because they start to see these use cases and start to understand where value can be driven from. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's a great point. I, it is. Uh, I I believe it was Alfa Romeo did an NFT thing too. Uh, but theirs is like to store car data, which I think is great. That's a great use for NFTs because you're utilizing the benefit of what an NFT is for that specific purpose, which is like an NFT is a VIN basically. Um, I think I think that's a good thing as well. But it is that process of trying to they're trying to figure out probably what it is. What what can we do with this? And you know they have. Uh, probably tons of money they can throw at research and development. And that's, that's uh, going to be interesting. But that's the part of this space that excites me is, is not so much the, the currency aspect, which I know a lot of people are super about. It's just not my personal um, joy. But for me is definitely to see how blockchain itself just grows and morphs and then integrates into the existing infrastructure and, and either simplifies or makes it more efficient would be uh, absolutely fantastic. I think the use cases that are developing for NFTs in particular is absolutely amazing. And we have a, a blog post coming out about that soon. But as long as people are taking an ethical standpoint when they are creating these use cases and people are benefiting from it, then I think we're moving in the right direction. Like there still will be bad actors, but as long as there are people out there using it for good, then that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean NFTs can be really powerful. So our our use case is is important for the retail investor, but it is geared for retail investors. Um, and the big reason that it was a big big deal for us is that it will power a business to business payment system. And what you end up with is a very secure end to end uh, two entity system, which you wouldn't have if you just were transitioning between wallets. There's a lot of ways that that the, those payments can be intercepted. There's just a lot of security issues with that. And now if you can prove who someone is by that NFT and only provide that person with that NFT in that specific wallet, if they're the only ones that have access to this location, then it's it's virtually impossible to to intercept those funds. And so that's kind of why it was a huge deal for us to do this, because this leads us to something bigger. But I do think NFTs, 
specifically are incredibly valuable and it's just that uh their potential hasn't been seen yet because i don't i think a lot of people are still chasing the money um but as these kind of smaller nft projects continue building these different use cases and showing the power of of what something that can be truly unique and proven uh and that can't be you know mucked with or spoofed that becomes really valuable hey hi show that's amazing hi show do you think there's going to be a saying, once you go NFT, you don't go back? <laughs> I think that definitely is going to happen. Like I really foresee a future where we have all kinds of, I guess, asset ownership registered through NFT or NFT-like like structures. So like we're already working with these physical assets and supply chains, but I can see it also coming to consumer goods. And then that NFT uh, that is linked, for example, to physical asset will be linked to an experience in the metaverse. Um, so I think it, it'll definitely, it's, it's something that's going to be impacting a, a lot of us um, looking forward. I think a question I have is how will this impact like the way that we see value in, in different stuff? Because I can see it's going to be really crazy to even wrap, I guess, our heads around like that everything kind of has a store of value or is represented at least to have a store of value and how will we go about it uh, as a society. Yeah, and that it can be traded and it can be gamified and it can be incentivized so that everybody is like win-win in, in some way, hopefully. Well, that's what we hope for. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we've had a, an incredible conversation and I don't know, just you're blowing my mind here, everybody. You're just carrying this thing beautifully and um, I hope it's really helping. I th I'm getting the sense that everybody is really excited to be, not only be here and talking to each other, but just excited about this space in general and what it's bringing. And uh, from my perspective, I'm seeing all of you coming to the space and working and creating in your own niche, in your own place, in your own space. And it's combining and collaborating to make something bigger and that's that's all that's that's coming. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It is very exciting. And I think but so be, yeah, go ahead, Kelsey. Down sorry. there will be more mass adoption of it. Once right. more people understand it, then they'll begin to value it, and and this might even make people rethink about the value of their every everyday movements. I mean, earlier I was talking about um, the burn to earn gaming, which is new, where you will actually earn crypto for, for working out, basically. Yeah. Yes, true. But uh, I have my personal opinion about mass adoption. And I think the when a project say they want to, to create that mass adoption for cryptocurrencies and DeFi space, they are focusing only on people. But the thing is, you need to focus on companies too, because companies will create demand on blockchain, so people will be tempted to use blockchain. So it's like a two side yeah. sort. Yeah, makes sense for sure. And it goes yeah. back to what others were saying before. Heisho was saying before yeah. uh, about like about the, and even Nutella. Um, you guys were saying before about the companies needing to come in and to to bring it up and to develop it and find those places that it does add value for real. And then people, that, that will be the adoption. Another thing I'd like to bring up too is outside of companies, and, and companies are obviously really important, and that's how most people got exposed to computers first, is before computers were a household item, they used them at work. And so that is, that is a normal pathway for things to be mass adopted by people outside of work is to introduce it there. But, you know, one of the other big places that I think has been kind of um, ignored heavily is the education uh, pipeline. Colleges, universities, you know, even high schools and, and other schools, so many things came up and that's where kids got, you know, exposed to or, or young adults got exposed to something and then wanted to actually use it in their private lives. So I think that focusing on getting, you know, intertwined getting the the metaverse or you know the blockchain or crypto in general intertwined with the education system getting kids exposed to it because then they're going to be they're in a more creative uh point in their lives when they're young kids like just starting high school or even before 
they're going to come up with use cases on their own. They're going to they're going to dream about this stuff and fantasize about it. That's how we got all the great video games was kids in the 1980s getting really exposed to computers in school and then they became, you know, computer designers or or game designers and all of a sudden we we you know have a, a plethora of, you know, amazing uh like gameplay. So it's a uh, yeah, education pipeline, the the company pipeline, that's how we get it to you know, us, you know, as a whole, right. Outside of those, uh, institutions was the word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that's beautiful. I'm so glad you mentioned that Scott. And I think that rounds things out nicely for us because it leaves something still open that we haven't really tackled yet. And the right, you know, there's this whole learning space, uh, that, uh, will eventually get touched as well. Well, Look, I would love to keep going on this, but we do have some time constraints. And this is just a testament to the energy that you all bring today. And, um, you know, Driven Ecosystem and Cryo, we're, we're wishing you very well in your endeavors. It's nice to have B2B discussions that also touch, you know, all of us as, as users. And for me, it was nice to see that NFTs are going to seep everywhere they can, like water. It'll go wherever it can. So I think we're going to round out. I, I just wish there was more time, but I'm going to bring in Nutella and get some Tokel news for us today. Not too much. We've been, uh, well, actually, it's kind of, kind of very, very cool. We've been working away with the community testers on the decentralized exchange uh, release for, the, for our DAP. So if you'd like to become uh, a community tester, feel free to uh, join our Discord and you'll be, get access to uh, some of our test decentralized application releases. And uh, you can go ahead and create NFTs on there and then trade them with each other. That's been going really well. Uh, we're expecting to publish a date for release of that shortly. So that will enable uh, the first time that you'll be able to actually trade NFTs within our DAP. Uh, which is all uh, on-chain, uses the on-chain decentralized exchange mechanism. So uh, really excited to get that out to the community. Wonderful. We're excited to have it. And once again, we're super excited to have uh, our guests today. Sorry for the, the psych out there, Heishal. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people go to follow you and find out what you're doing? So we're most active on LinkedIn, I would say. And yeah, there we post everyday stuff and, and even the projects that we're working on. So that's LinkedIn, uh, Cryo page. And the website? Yeah, cryo.io is our website, of course. <laughs> Perfect. K-R-Y-H-A. All right, thank you very much. These guys from, from Cyber Nights, you guys have been a terrific guest. We appreciate having you on. Paul, thank you so much for helping to arrange this. Where can we go to find out more about you? and what you're doing was well, a pleasure uh, you can find us on driveonecosystem.com and the drive on ecosystem on twitter and from there you can go to our discord server our uh, telegram group perfect thank you and brandon same for you uh yeah so uh all the links uh paul mentioned as well for for driven ecosystem uh you can find us anywhere we have a youtube channel as well. Uh, so we have some stuff that's related to our particular token, but also some educational content on there in, in DeFi in general that we very strongly encourage people to go look at, especially if they're new. If you want to read a little bit more about our NFTs, uh, cybernights.finance is the website for our minter that we have. Uh, they're built on the Polygon blockchain, and you can mint them there as well, and so on and so forth. So Glad yeah. you mentioned that because, yeah, we didn't get to uh, what chain you're using. So you're using Polygon chain. Perfect. And speaking of finding people, there's Nico. Nico, you're very fundamental in the development of all of this. And now we're coming full circle towards closer. We are now closer and like an hour closer towards your first year anniversary. So totally yeah. wishing you very well. Yeah. Where can we find you? Same place, right? Yeah. Same place. On every, I'm active on every social platform, so yeah, and mostly in Telegram. Awesome, and of course you're you're a, a great guy to talk to. So, other than that, thank you again, Kelsey. Of course, and thank you for hosting. Thank you guys My, for attending, yeah. and thank you to everyone that listened in, and congratulations on your one year. Thank yeah, you, congratulations, guys. 
I want to thank you, uh, Heichel, Nutella, Kelsey and Giuliano for having you there. It was a very interesting podcast and I, I bet the, the audience really learned something from what we are doing and what we are building. It was a pleasure to talk with you today. Perfect. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everyone. And until next time, tune in for the next one. We'll be talking with guests from the marketing field. And they'll tell us how to sell your NFTs. Yeah, that's on the 17th of May. So keep an eye out for the announcement and further details. All right. And follow at Tokel Platform on Twitter and join the Tokel Discord if you haven't already. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.